Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. Gotta give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahaya, not Allah. It's Yahweh. His only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapis Christus, not Yeshaya, not Yehoshua. It's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rikak Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who are the apostles and the elders over all of Israel. And the sincere salutation to all the ark in pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, we're going to hopefully let. And shalom to the Agua for who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from the GMS Orlando camp coming into another lesson. In truth, facts, faith, and edification, another daily edification, Lord's willing, is be edifying. This is a clip from a movie called Gods of Egypt. Lord willing, it's be edifying. Why, in a thousand years of peace, what have you accomplished? A land of people who dream of nothing more. You see that? In a thousand years of peace, what have you accomplished? This is the mindset of a heathen and it's two thirds of Israel. Now you got Jake supposedly looking for justice and peace right now. We would never have justice and peace in the land of captivity. This is the land of our punishment. Now, the Lord say, he give us our daily bread and by the sweat of your brow, right? You shall eat your bread. The Lord sets us up in the land of captivity so we'll have just enough to make it through. However, he see it fit. If you chasing more than your daily bread, you're being wicked. If you're looking for more than what the Lord have already established for you to have in captivity, in your punishment, in your judgment, you are being wicked. We will not get peace nor justice until we are in our land. Until the Lord delivers his people into their land, into his land. So first precept I'm going to get is Jeremiah. As a matter of fact, let's read this first. Isaiah 48 and 17. It reads, because Jake here, through all these different Black Lives Matter movements and whatever you have going on, Jake is looking for some type of justice and peace from a nation that will not save you. As I tell you in Lamentation 4 and 17. As for our watch, and we have watched for a nation that could not save us. This is Isaiah 14 and 17. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened, hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea, right? Then had thy peace been as the river and as thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the, <clears throat> like the gravel thereof. His name should be, his name should have not been cut off nor destroyed from before me. If we had to hearken to the voice of the Lord, right? Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing. Declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord Yahweh have redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsteth not when he leadeth them through the desert. He causes the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also and the waters gushed out. 
Like it, like it tell you in Numbers. What happened with Moses and Aaron, with the Israelites? See, this is how it's supposed to be. But it ain't going to be like this until we get in the kingdom. Verse 22. There is no peace, saith the Lord Yahweh, unto the wicked. Two-thirds of Israel will not get peace. While they're trying to get justice and peace, there will be no justice and peace. The Lord say, oh, had thy had a hearken, we would have had peace like a river as the waves of the sea. This is Jeremiah 23 and verse 3. It reads, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase. Now see this guy, uh, Russell Crowe, talking about what have you accomplished in a thousand years of peace? Peace. That's what we accomplished. Peace. He talking about people that look for nothing more. What else do we supposed to look for? Peace, man. Righteousness. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, and they shall... And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord Yahweh. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, starting with Yahweh, and a king shall reign and prosper, which is Yahweh, starting with Yahweh, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. This is when Yahweh shall come and redeem the elect. When the heavenly father Yahweh sent his son back, this is going to happen. This is Isaiah chapter 2, <clears throat> starting at verse 2. It reads, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the house, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh shot from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. It said they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their pruning hooks into spears, meaning it ain't going to be no more war. It ain't going to be no more instruments to fight battles with. As I tell you right here in Ezekiel 39, let's read this. We're looking for peace, man. So you got the wicked, like this guy Russell Crowe talking about, in a thousand years of peace, what have you accomplished? Peace. That's the whole point. <clears throat> this is Ezekiel 39. And verse 8, Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord Yahweh power. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire, and burn the weapons, both the shields, and the bucklers, the bows, and the arrows, and the handstays, and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Completion. So that they should take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest, but they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord Yahweh. Ain't gonna be no more weapons. Ain't gonna be no more war. It's, every, it's gonna be righteousness, man. Peace. This is <clears throat> Michael chapter four and one. It reads, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Like I tell you in Daniel 2, 
When Yahweh's kingdom gets set on earth, it's going to be over all other kingdoms, man. Verse 3. Uh, verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the power of Jacob. They say the same thing in Isaiah 2. And we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, shall from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Verse 4, but they shall sit every man under, under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shav, hosts, have spoken it. For all people will walk, everyone in the name of his God, with a little g, and we will walk in the name of our Lord, Yahweh, power, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shav, our power forever and ever. In that day, said the Lord, Yahweh, I will assemble her that halted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord Yahweh shall reign over them, and the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth for, forever. It's an ever and forever. So, for all people will walk, everyone in the name of his God, little g. And we will walk in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, our power forever and ever. It's going to be it's going to be a righteous kingdom of peace. Everything will be in order, man. Decently and in order, as the scriptures say. All the other nations, the heathen nation going to follow after the 144,000, the elect. Which is going to be the governing body under Yahweh, Shai. And the in the Israel in the Israel is going to flow to Yahweh Bashim Havasha. But all nations shall flow under Yahweh Bashim Havasha, man, in peace, in righteousness. This is Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 11. It reads. But now I will not be unto thee. The residue of his people, as in the former days, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, for the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. Who is the remnant of these people? The hundred and forty four thousand and the under multitude. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, that's northern and southern kingdom, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your father provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, and I repented not. So again have I thought in these days. To do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear ye not. This is about to happen, man, in the kingdom of heaven. So this guy talking about what have you accomplished in a thousand years of peace? Peace. The whole point is to live righteousness, man, in righteousness, in peace. No more chemtrail, GMO food, contaminated waters. No more LGBTQP, no more adulteries, no more, no wickedness, man. Everything shall be done decently and in order. This is verse 20. Thus said the Lord Yahweh host, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Shah, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, 
even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that power is with you. Okay, they're going to flow to Israel, man. They're going to flow to the Hebrew Israelites, the northern and southern kingdom. Today, today known as so-called Negro, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. You are the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. This is Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. It reads, Turn ye to the strongholds, ye prisoners of hope. We are prisoners of hope, man. Even to do, even, even today, do I declare that I will render double unto you? It tell you that in Isaiah 60. When I have bent Judah for me and filled the bow with Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, talking all talking to all 12 tribes, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. So in that day, the Lord is going to make you so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, you West Indian Haitians, a sword of a mighty man. Verse 14, and the Lord Yahweh shall, shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as a lightning, and the Lord Yahweh power shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh shall host, shall defend them, northern kingdom and southern kingdom, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord Yahweh, their power, shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon, the, upon his land. Just like we're sign right now, a sign of wonder, astonishment right now. This is how we're going to be in the kingdom, but righteously, man. Verse 17. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maidens. This is talking about the kingdom of heaven, man. Everything going to be done in righteousness, man. This is Zechariah 10 and 6. And I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph and I will bring them again to the place. And I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I have not cast them off. For I am the Lord Yahweh, their power, and will hear them, man. He said, we shall be in that day as though we have never been casted away, man. Okay? Basically, like, no remembrance of being in captivity for the last and final time, man. This is... Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 2. It reads, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, starting with Yahweh, like it says in Jeremiah 23 and 5. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Who's going to be the ones that escaped of Israel? The elect, man. They said they was a fright, but gave, but gave glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, all 12 tribes, the elect first and foremost, the 144,000 and the unnumbered multitude, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord Yahweh will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, it's upon all the mansions, all the palaces of Israel, all the kings, and upon her assemblies a cloud, a smoke by day, and, and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for upon all the glory shall be a defense. We're going to have chariots hovering over our palaces, man. Okay? There ain't going to be no mansion, man. Esau, Edom live in mansions. We're going to have palaces, man. 
A chariot shall be hovering over every 144,000 pallets, man. And the unnumbered multitude. Chariots, man, a covering. Again, it say, For upon all the glory shall be a defense, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a cover from storm and from rain, man. Safety. That means safety, man. Safety. That's why I read Jeremiah 23. Talking about safety, man. Total safety. This is Jeremiah 28 and 9. Because these passages line, you're talking about peace, peace. Like I can tell you in Jeremiah 14, like I can tell you in um Ezekiel 13, but they lying to you. There will be no peace. Jeremiah 28 and 9. The prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Habashah, had truly sent him. There will be no peace until the kingdom. And they're starting our apostles and elders and their elders. They've been telling you for the longest. And there will not be peace until you get to the kingdom, man. If any prophet, if any false prophet come and telling you that it's going to be peace here on earth, they're lying to you, man. There will be no peace until you are in the kingdom. This is <clears throat> Revelation. Oh, let's get this. Isaiah 60. And 22. It reads. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one a strong nation. Out the Lord Yahweh. Bahashim Habashah. Will hasten it in his time. How is a little one going to become a strong one? Verse 21. Let's read 21. Isaiah 16 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. Stone with Yahweh Shah. The work of my hands that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. Out of Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Habashah, will hasten it in his time. How can a little one become a strong a, a, a thousand and a small one a strong nation? You gotta have wise for this, man. Okay? Closing precept. Revelation. Chapter 20 and 3. And it reads. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Talking about the 144,000, man. All men. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Hamashiach, or for the witness of Yahawashah, and for the word of power, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, were in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Amashiach a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. The ones that are going to die, two thirds, you ain't coming back until a, after a certain point of time, man. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, and we keep telling you, you're trying to get out of here on the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On the second, on such the second death, have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Hamashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. So you want to get out of here on the first resurrection. Lord willing, we up that number. If not, you're going to die a grievous death. And you have to come back into the kingdom as a baby. Everything going to be all righteous. And when you come back. Hey, but you want to, like I tell you in 2nd Ezra, man, you want to see these things play out. Ezra said, Ezra, and when you read in 2nd Ezra 13, he said, blessed our day. He said, um, blessed our day that was left behind. Okay, you want to be left behind, man, to see these things happen. If you die before all this drama take place, and you're going back to the spiritual realm, but you want to, hey, well, as Paul said, you know, it's needful. You know, to die is gain, but to live is Hamashiach. It's needful for us to be here, man, to do the labor, to see these things play out. That's why the scripture tell you in Matthew that bless your eyes for you see. You want to be here for these things to play out, man. If you get if you get taken before these things play out, you're going back to the spiritual realm. 
But the ones that's going to die them grievous death, see, the ones that get taken now, they back with the Lord, man. But if you die a grievous death here, you got to come back as a baby, and you got to come back and see things all righteous all over again, man. That you don't want. You want to take place in the first resurrection. Lord willing, you can take place. Lord willing, we can take place in the first resurrection. Lord willing, we be of that number. This is Revelation uh, 22. And one, it reads, Now he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeded out of the throne of power and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve men of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of power and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face and his name, Shall be in their foreheads. Lord, wasn't edifying. Gotta give all praise and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah. Bahashim Rikach Quraish. That be honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who are well, who teach well. And a sincere salutation to all the oxen pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth. The entire world waking up the hope for the elect. And shalom to the Agua for who are listening and learning. The few sisters who are listening and learning. Lord, wasn't edifying till next time I say shalom. A land of people who dream of nothing more. What is, is there to dream for, to want, besides peace and righteousness? There is nothing else, man. Peace. Shalom. Wa, abar, abar.